looking at the proposed memorandum of the grade 8 mathematics test September 2025. Okay, we have seven pages and five questions and we have to answer all of them. Okay, so when I look at the first question <clears throat> or section A, we are telling us that four options are provided to the answers. We need to circle the correct one. Okay, so 2x, 2 into 5x minus 3, when you open this up, so this 2 affects that, the 2 affects that, so it's going to be 10x minus 6, which is option C. And then if x minus 8 is 11, then what's going to be x is going to be 11 plus 8, which is 19, option B. Then option number 1.3, consider the figure below and choose the correct statement. Q1 and Q2, are they equal? Nope. These two are supplementary. In other words, Q1 plus Q2 must give us 180 degrees. PR and that, this is a nope. This is a nope. Correct statement is D. 1.4, which statement is not correct regarding the triangle below? So this is an equilateral triangle. All sides are equal and all angles need to be 60. Okay. So E is 90, nope, all sides are equal, yes, D is 60, yes, all angles are equal. Which one is not, which is A? Then 1.5, a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides is called a trapezium. All right, section B, question two, they want us to simplify without a calculator, so open the brackets and collect the like terms. So it's gonna be four X, and then 4 and that is going to be a minus 4 plus 5. That's a 4x plus 1. That is the answer. We cannot add this together because these are not like terms. And then 2.1.2, .2, we have this and that. It's going to be 3x squared. This and that is minus x minus 2x squared plus x. Say so 2x because it's this one multiplied by that. The negative 2 and the 7, we get a negative 14. Opening up, it's going to be 3x squared. Why don't I just collect the like terms? Okay, let me collect the like terms. Minus 2x squared, minus x plus 2x, minus 14. That gives me x squared, plus x, minus 14. These are not like terms, so we leave the answer like that. Then we have some exponents, okay, 2p to the exponent of 0 reduces to a 1, plus p, we open this, minus 2p minus 2. Like terms, this and this, this and that, so it's going to be minus p minus 1 as our final answer. And then 2.2, find the numerical value of this expression if y is negative 2. So 5 into negative 2 squared minus 6 into negative 2 plus 1. So that's a 5 times 4 plus 12 plus 1. So that is a 20 plus 12 plus 1. 32, 33 becomes the answer. Question number 3. If you're given this, they want us to get the value of t in the table. So this is like a flow diagram when t is negative 7 or when y is negative 7, what is the x? So negative 7 is equal to negative 3 minus 1. Let's move this one to that side. Negative 7 plus 1 is equal to negative 3x. This becomes a negative 6 is equal to negative 3x. Then divide both sides by negative 3, meaning that our x is going to be just a two all right then 3.2 so for x without a calculator step number one move the seven that side meaning that 5x is equal to 13 plus 7 5x is a 20 divide both sides by 5 meaning that x is a 4 then we're dealing with exponents let's start by moving that and then these bases are the same. We just need to plus up the exponents. So 2x plus x plus 1 over 16 
we said it's seven plus one, which is eight. And then uh, we can change this 16 to a base of two, which is two to the exponent of four. And then we subtract it from the top so that it is two X minus three, because I have my two X plus one, then I'm subtracting a four. Then eight can be written as two to the exponent of three, and then drop the bases. 2x minus 3 is 3. Let's move the 3 that side. 2x is a 6. Divide both sides by 2. x becomes a 3. Then 3.2.3. Okay, let's change the bases to be 3, and then we're going to have to subtract. So 3x minus 5 minus minus 3 is equal to 3 to the exponent of 3. That's going to be x. This is going to be minus 2 is equal to 3. Let's move the 2 that side. So 3 plus 2 becomes a 5. All right, question number 4, which is the geometry. In the figure below, AB is parallel to CD. Okay. They want us to get the size of the angles, but we must give reasons. Okay. They want us to get x. So we know that x is going to be the same as 80 because we have the z or the n. Okay, we're saying it's 80 degrees. Those are alternate angles because AB is parallel to CD. And then if this is 80, they want us to find the size of y. Okay, so we know that y and the 60 they are forming what we call the F. Okay, we can see this F here. Meaning that this Y and the 60 are the same. So what we're going to say is that Y is going to be 60. Those are corresponding angles because AB is parallel to CD. Then we need to look for Z. So this is a 60 way Z. Z is somewhere here. So Z is going to be 80 because the Z and the 80 are vertically opposite. Okay, vert op angles. All right, so that is how we would have obtained those six marks. And then 4.2, they're telling us that RS is part of CW. We must find the size of A. So what we know is that 56, A, and 75, they are all at one point on a line. So you're going to say that 56 plus A plus 75 must give us 180 degrees adjacent supplementary angles. Or so someone can say that those are angles on a line. And then we know that uh, 56 and 75, okay, that's a 1, 131. A plus 131 should give us 180 and then A becomes 180 minus 131, which is a 49 degrees. Okay, that is what we would have obtained. Then SVW, SVW. In other words, we must find the size of this angle. Okay, so if this is a 49, we know that this SVW, is an exterior angle if we are focusing on this triangle here. Okay, SVW becomes exterior. And the property of exterior angles is that if we can get the two opposite interior, then we shall be able to get that exterior. So let's start by finding R and gonna say that R is a 49. Those are alternate angles because SR is parallel to WT. Okay, we're seeing a Z or rather N by the corners here. And if that's the case, this angle and that angle will be the same. Okay, then we can go ahead and say that our SVW is going to be 49 plus the 56 reason, the exterior angle of a triangle. So 49 and 56, that's going to be 5, 105 degrees. Okay, so 
that is how we would have gone about that. Then uh, question number five, they're asking us, between these triangles, which ones are congruent? Now, we know that triangles can only be congruent if they are identical in all ways, okay? The angles are the same and the sides are also the same. Okay, so we can start by looking at the sides. I mean, all the triangles have the same sides. Perfect. But then when you look at the angle, the angle is between the two marked sides, just like this. This angle is off. Okay, so this one cannot be congruent. So we're going to say that triangle XYZ is congruent to triangle RST or whichever letters you want to put. Okay, so that is how we would have represented that. Then 5.2 in the diagram below, okay, this triangle is similar to that triangle. They want us to find the length of X. So when triangles are similar, the sides will be in proportion, okay? Meaning that if I get the 15 divided by 5, you should be able to get the same thing as Y divided by 6. So the same ratio. So 15 by 5 is a 3. Mean that it is y over 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 6, meaning that our y is 18. Okay? Then uh, ish, they said x, not y. What's wrong with me? But it's fine. I'll, I'll do the x. Don't worry. So let's see. With the x, I'm going to say 5 over 15 is equal to x over 12. Okay? Then um, it's going to be 1 over 3 is equal to x over 12, multiply by 12, multiply by 12. Meaning that your x is going to be a 4. So that is a 4. This is 18. All right. Then 5.3, they're telling us that in the diagram, this side is the same as that. That angle is 62. I, G, J is 20. They want us to get the size of R, this angle here. So start by telling us that T is also going to be a 62 because this is an isosceles triangle, okay? And if that triangle is isosceles, this angle must also be the same as that. Angles that are opposite equal sides. That's the reason. So if that's a 62, then we can add up angles in a triangle and then obtain what we need. So we're going to say that R plus 62 plus 62 must give us 180 interior angles of a triangle. Then R is going to be 180 minus 124. Okay, then our R becomes a 56. All right, then uh, they want the size of P. So what do we know about P? is that uh, P and the 20, okay, this 20 here and the P should be equivalent to that angle so that it is exterior to that small triangle, okay? So I'm going to say P plus 20 must give us a 62 exterior angle of a triangle. Then I just need to transpose and subtract 62 minus 20, which becomes a 42. 5.4, the diagram below, we have HJ being the same as JK. Okay, so these two are equal. OJ is a six, OJ that is a six. JKH is two X plus 15. Calculate with reasons the value of x. Okay, so if that is x, this is that. What's happening here? So when you look at this shape correctly, okay, if these two are equal and these sides are also parallel, chances are that this is technically a rhombus. And if it's a rhombus, we know that the diagonals meet at 90 degrees, okay? 
So what we're going to say, we're going to say 90 plus x plus 2x plus 15 should give us 180 degrees interior angles of triangle OGK. Collect the like terms. 3x, 15 and 90 is going to be 105 is equal to 180. Then let's move the 105 that side. We're going to get a 75. Divide both sides by 3. Meaning that our x is just a 25. All right. Then if the area of the above is 48, calculate the length of hk. Okay, this diagonal. They gave us a formula. Okay, so let's just substitute the formula and say that it is 2 times 48 divided by ij if this is a 6 this one must also be a 6 which becomes a 12 okay so we're dividing this by 12 then how many 12s do we have in 48 they are basically 4 so 2 times 4 we get 8 or you can use your small calculator and then get those values. So, guys, this brings us to the end of this paper. I wish you guys all the best in your preparation for the end of term test. And let's meet then. Bye-bye. Uh,